Welcome back to Everyday Garage, guys. In this video, we're gonna be doing more sanding, which is essentially just the theme of this channel now. <laughs> All I really do is sand stuff. But remember, in last video, guys, we got this thing fully painted, and man, does it look so good. Let's just take a moment and look at it again. It shines so nice. Just looks awesome. I'm so excited looking at this thing. The dash just came out so good with that metallic really showing when you throw the light on it. Now, the truth being that I painted this in a garage and it's my first paint up. So there are absolutely mistakes on it. If you can tell, let's actually come over here. You can see there's a, there's trash in it and I have a drip. And over here, I got this bad boy over here, which is, you know, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Let's see if it'll show up. There you go. So basically some things aren't perfect. So in this episode, we're just gonna jump in and cut and buff the cab, see if we can get this thing shining the way I want it to, and then finally mount it to the chassis. That way, my goal, guys, is to get this to be a roller so I can get this cab in and out of here so we can actually paint the rest of the truck and hopefully one day actually get this thing on the road. Now let's jump into it and get started. So let's just jump into it, guys. I've already kind of been testing little areas on the cab. So this I've sanded with 1000. And if you can see, there's like, yeah, that little area right there. So I got to sand a little bit more, but it takes the nibs out. And that one is actually really high. This one was a big one, but it actually is coming out pretty good. And then I wanted to show you, I got to get out some orange peel. Like I said, first paint job wasn't the greatest, but you know, it's not too bad if you look at it. But definitely want to get the orange peel out while we're at it. <sighs> so it's going to be a cut and buff of the whole cab, guys. Uh, <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of sanding, but it'll get done. Now I've never done that, so it doesn't mean I have any of the tools. And I looked it up to get what you really need and people recommended 3M and all that stuff. That's crazy expensive, guys. So what we have here is the Harbor Freight system that I kind of cooked up. So I got a Harbor Freight DA and then I just got their foam pad because they recommend you getting the uh, a foam pad to kind of DA sand. And uh, to get this little backing part with the foam pad is $120 from 3M, which is just not happening. So this thing was, I think, $9, $7, I think $6.99. So we got with that. I got the little polisher for this because I'm really, you know, kind of curious how I'm going to get these body lines here. So I'm thinking something like this. And then they were running a special. You get a battery and a charger and a tool for hundred bucks. So I picked this tool, which is their rotary. This I picked up on sale. This is a DA polisher. Got all their pads, even their, their Hercules line for finishing discs and everything like that. All together, this cost me about 380 bucks. Oh, and also I got their glaze compound. Which sounds like a lot of money, and that's because it absolutely is, guys, but it is a fraction of the cost if you want with all these name brands. I think there's Chemical Guys, there's uh, 3M, obviously, all that stuff. So that's the route I went. If you don't have the tools, that is the hardest stuff about doing stuff on your own. If you don't already have the tools, you got to count the cost in. So we're going to be wet sanding the whole cab. Um, I was those test areas I showed you with 1,000. I'm actually going to change it up and start with 1,500. I really don't want to take any of the clear off. Now, I have three coats of clear on there. It's a high solid clear. So it was a two to one mix. That's something you have to think about when you're, you know, buff, cut and buffing is the clear that you have, what thickness you might have. Your TDS will tell you the average thickness for every spray is all I'm saying. I really don't know, but it's kind of what I'm trying to do and figure out here. So I also picked up this, which is wet sanding by hand. I have a couple soft blocks. This is what I used when I color sanded the actual base. And then I have all the stuff I already showed you. So that's what we're going to do, guys. Let's kind of just jump in. To start this off, guys, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit this bad boy here and kind of just knock out this panel first, mainly because that's the hardest part. So what I'm gonna use, I did say I was gonna start with 15, but I'm gonna use 1,000 just to get out the drips because it's a higher grid, it's gonna be a little bit easier. And I'm gonna be using a Durablock, but this is a different one, this is the Ultra Flex. So it's still pretty stiff, but it has a little bit of flex to it because everything on this cab is essentially curved. So that's gonna be a hit up guys. And then I do have these like little really soft ones. That way I can get into smaller tight areas. Ah, so let's just jump into it. So like I said, thousand grit on the block. I'm just gonna see, it should be easier to show up once I sand it. I'm gonna see what I can get out. And using the block will definitely help me. Yeah, there you go. Make sure I'm staying on the highs. The upside is in certain areas like this, there's really little to no orange peel. There is just a tiny bit. So it's not gonna take much to get it all out. The biggest part of this, let me get more water. It's just gonna be getting this drip out and then lightly sanding the rest of this. All right, I had to switch over to the little softer block. I just wanted to get like a light touch real quick. 
and I think I got it all out. Which again, terrifying, because <laughs> the thoughts of burning through this were real. Let me show you guys. All right, there it is, all cleaned up, and you can kind of sort of see it shadowing right there. But it's super smooth and you can't feel it, so I don't wanna go too deep into it, especially since we're gonna go over it with a couple more grits to smooth out and get rid of all the scratches. Now I just wanna get everything else real smooth and away from orange peel. You can kind of see the orange peel right there. But now I'll just go over everything with 1500. The 1500 will take out the thousand grit scratches and kind of hopefully level everything else out. All right, clean up the panel a little bit so we're not just grinding dust into it. A new microfiber cloth. They do say squeegee it and stuff like that. I don't have a squeegee. <laughs> Poorly prepared for this. Now 1500 and on a little soft block and kind of just see what happens. Okay, after just going over it a couple times, it actually flattened out all the way down into here. So the 1500 is doing great. Just a little bit of orange peel. We gotta get out, little spots. And then I'm gonna bring it probably all the way down to here. Obviously I'm not gonna sand away down here. That way that's really uniform throughout the panel. Okay, so I actually timed it and I've been sanding for about 12 minutes, but that's 1500. Everything is dead flat now, all the way down. All the orange peel, I ran into a bunch of little nibs through here, which is basically just trash and dirt in there, which is what that is. So it actually looks really, really good. Now I'm gonna leave that right now because I think when we actually buff it, because I'm gonna do part by part, that way I can cross it all off. I'll buff to like here, and that way there's like a lap over as I go. So that's good with 1500. Now I'm just gonna move on to 2000 and then 3000. All right, so that's 2000 and I'd bring you in, but it doesn't look any different. So, uh, <laughs> We're gonna jump to three and just see if that made a difference. I didn't hear a noise, a difference in cutting, so maybe I didn't cut enough. But hopefully, you start to see a little difference with the 3000. Now, the upside is, is the polish does say it can take away up to 1200 grit scratches. So if I missed a little bit of the 2000 or something like that, hopefully it still comes out. Time will tell. All right, that's the end result with 3000. It's still kind of hazier than I thought it would be, but if you, you can kind of see a shine if you go this way. There you go, get a good reflection right there. So there is some shine to it and it looks pretty good. So I think we'll head over and start getting the buffer set up. All right, I'm actually just gonna go with the, uh, the rotary or the DA buffer. From what I understand, it's a little less aggressive. So I, I'm gonna wanna light touch it first. So, and then for the system at Harbor Freight, they have coarse, medium, and then a polishing pad. So I'm gonna go medium, especially with the 3000. I should need it a lot, just enough to get those scratches out. Should just go right there. And the idea is you wanna lay it really, really flat against it, kind of hold and do that. I'm gonna also start low and then go up. Now, from what I understand, you have to prime your pad. So I'm gonna use the uh, ultra cuts, so basically the highest, just to get the cuts out. And I'm just gonna rub it into the pad. Again, guys, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying here. Oh, and there's stuff in it already. That's a good sign. It just, I just opened it. <laughs> oh, that's way too much. Okay. So, now some people put this on a panel and then they can like uh, start it up a little bit just so it gets into the pad. Uh, again, I'm just kind of afraid to do that. So I'm gonna just kind of lather it into the panel or the pad. I probably have put way too much, but the idea is you just get it all in there. Just gonna put a little bit on the pad. I'm still gonna try to prime it a little bit. So just gonna put a couple drops like that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. And then I'm gonna go low setting. The idea is I'm gonna spread the compound first and then kind of move from there. So flat against and... That's low. And that is flicking compound everywhere. <laughs> I'm making a mess. Check the rocker out, dang it.
<laughs> That's actually pretty good. Wow. I could see a little bit more. Let me see if I can show you guys. All right, guys, it looks really, really good. Super happy about that, but I don't know if it'll show up on camera. There are, see the haze in here, there's some scratches, but there are some scratches in here and up in here that I, it definitely is not, the camera's not picking up. But I think that's too big and I'm getting too scared to get it close to the edge and get it. So let me go get that little one. All right. Same idea. Ooh, just rub it everywhere and make a mess. Awesome. Prime the pad. Yeah, push it in. Well, would you look at this? Ah, oh, it's so awesome. Scary seeing it all scuffed up like that, but it's mirror finish. Let's see if I can get a wave at you guys. Just looks awesome. Now we have some scratches and swirl marks, which I'm actually really glad that this shows up. So let's see if we can get the rest of that out with some finish. Well, there it is guys, it's not perfect. So there's a little bit of micro scratches and I'm gonna try to go over it a few times with that to get the rest out, but I'm super happy with it. Even if that's as good as it gets, this is a driver quality and I don't know if you can see the light there. There's, I don't know, so I can show you that light bar. There it is. So right there in the panel, no distortion. It's straight, well, it's straight on a curved panel. But what I mean is no orange peel. Everything's really flat. It's just, I'm really, really happy guys. Again, it's not perfect. But it's really hard to get a perfect job when I've never done this before. So that's just awesome. I will take that. The drips out. The panel is really, really nice. It's ready for wax now. But as you can see, I've created a heck of a mess, guys. Wow, I had no idea. So that dash is all dirty. I've seen a lot of guys leave the tape on before they do this. I'm starting to understand why. So I may actually come up and take the window so I don't just get this compound all over the inside. And then we'll just start jamming out and take care of the rest of the cab, guys. But that took, that took me about 50 minutes. Now, it shouldn't take you an hour to do that panel. Going slow, trying to figure it out. Probably could get that down to like a half hour, especially if you're not filming. So that's really, really awesome. Biggest thing is going to be when we get to the body lines. As you can see, I already kind of scuffed it up a little bit when I was bringing it. So I may try to use tape right now. We'll see how it goes. But let me go ahead and uh, clean all this up before the compound dries, which it's starting to and uh, we'll get to the rest of the cab. Well, I cleaned everything up and I went in and just kind of taped some stuff off. That way it just kind of keeps down on the mess that I'm eventually gonna create anyways. Cause this stuff, I mean, went everywhere. It's up there, it shot across the room, landed on this door, it landed on the scrap door. Can you see all the little spots there? Stuff just got everywhere, guys. So if I keep down on the mess a little bit, I'm gonna try. Now I'm gonna kind of switch gears. Let's just go ahead and knock out the whole cab and get it as I can. But I was thinking about just following it up all the way up to here. But the thing is guys, the mess was parted because that pad is just kind of too big for here. So I think I'm gonna bite the bullet and find me a three inch, which will fit really nicely here and be able to polish that up. I already jumped in Amazon. I saw one cheap shipped to my door for like 60 bucks. So I think I'm gonna do it. I know I'm spending a lot of money on this, but if I can do it right, I don't know, might as well. Plus, you know, benefit I have a YouTube channel. So the idea is that I'm probably gonna be doing this more in the future. So in my head, I'm, you know, making justifications. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is jump over here and just take care of this back panel, which I'm gonna actually use the DA for. It's a big reason why I picked this up. It's gonna be a lot easier to knock all that out while using this. But I went ahead and taped up the body line here so I don't scuff it up. Chances are I'll have to do that, tape this off and then tape it from the top and then actually end up doing the body line by itself. <clears throat> but I'm definitely gonna have to do the body line because it does have some trash in it, which I should have showed you before I put the tape on. Also, um, it's orange peely. So if this is flat and this is flat and that's orange peely, it's just gonna stand out. And this panel is actually the worst, guys. It's actually really, really orange peely. So if you can see, it's actually a lot worse. It's the worst part of the whole cab. I think that happened because it's low for me. I'm kind of taller. And I think what happened is, is I got too far away with the gun and I ended up not spraying it right. There's definitely a lot of that inconsistency. Some places are really flat, some are orange peely. That was all technique because the gun was set up the same. So this is going to be a lot harder to get out, but I'm still going to use the 1500. Kind of just spread it on the panel and go to town. Not too fast at first. <laughs> Let's try a little faster. All 
All right, guys, that's kind of how it turned out. Now there's still a lot of orange. That's the light's too bright for that. Let's see. There we go. Still a lot of orange peel. And honestly, I don't know if you can see, I got like this swirl mark from the DA. It's honestly this film on here. Like it's supposed to be kind of an innovative thing. It's got this like dry film. You can see it there. It's a film sanding disc. Uh, it just doesn't work well on that. I could try it on uh, the rotary polisher I have. It will fit on here also. But I think I'm just gonna switch over to hand sanding and just see if I can do it that way. I think I was already at this just about as long as I'd have been hand sanding with the same results. So I'm gonna switch over and just see. I think it's just gonna be about the same amount of time to be honest. Because the thing with the DA is it puts in finer scratches so it actually takes a little bit less away. And then I'm super bummed about this mark. So let's just switch back to what I know. All right, I got updates. I actually ended up pulling out this one. This one does sand a lot better. So the DA is going away for sure. Well, the pneumatic one, I put the foam pad on here. It works pretty good, but I still was getting some pigtails. Now I think they're all out, which is good. But pigtails are like swirls that the DA leaves and to get them out, I just went back over with the block. Now I do have a bunch of little spots. It still needs to come down a little bit more. There you go, there's some pigtails. So uh, will it show up? See if a little bit of less light it will. Let's see, where was it? Right here. So they're basically like swirls that go like that and that's from the DA and they're deeper than the actual um, grit that you're trying to put in. So I'm not trying to mess this up anymore. So I'll just stop being lazy. I'll hand sand everything. Now I have a bunch of nibs. The upside is I can bring it all the way up. So here are my little nibs that I need to get out. There's a bunch, man, there's so much trash in here. There's another spot. You can see all the little spots that need to get taken out. <sighs> I'm gonna go through the grits, 15, 2000, 3000. I'll bring you guys back when I have what it looks like. You already saw me do it, so let's let me jam this out. All right, so I think I got this all sanded out and flat and it's actually looking really, really good. But I have a couple of these spots, guys. Now, yeah, too much light. There we go. I don't know why it doesn't show up as well on camera, but that's actually like an indentation. I have another one up here. There's a bunch of them actually. Where? No, is there? Oh, a couple here, a couple in here, and then a few there. That's just from the body work. I didn't catch it during the body work stage. So once the clear comes on, it becomes a lot obvious, especially when you sand, but that's okay. I think I have a way to fix that. Okay, I actually got this off another YouTuber's channel and now that's Dirty Dan's Rod and Cycle. I think that's what it's called. Now, just to mix together a little bit of clear and hardener together. Now I was gonna show you mixing them, but uh, <laughs> I couldn't keep them separated. Now I'm just gonna kind of get them together just to get it mixed up and I'm gonna use this little screwdriver. I think Dan used a uh, toothpick. I don't have any toothpicks. So this tiny little screwdriver should do the job and just kind of put some clear in there. Now, in all honesty, I don't know how well that actually holds because you can't really sand in that little area, but it's so small, I think it should be fine and kind of just help fill the voids that way. And then we'll come back, sand it out. I'll let it harden up and then we'll just move on to another area. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but there we go and just, oh, that's too much and just kind of fill that area up. Now it's too much, obviously, but just come out and sand it out later. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just go through all the little areas and do that. All right, so there it is, just a couple little spots. I think uh, one, two, three over here, and that's it. That's not to be confused with like, maybe it's like a really low orange peel or anything like that. It's definitely not it. Yeah, I could actually feel it with my finger. It's a good little crater. And then also I had some over here, but I already knew about these. These are from when I color sanded the base and I had a bunch of trash in it. The trash came out and that didn't get feathered proper, properly before I put the, another base coat on. So what I'm trying to say, so got that all filled. I tried to look around to see if there's any others. I think we're good. Now I wait for that to dry because everything's got to take forever. I'm just going to jump over on the curves and stuff like that. Keep sanding out. I know I want to do it piece by piece, but you know, got to do what I got to do. I'm still going to maybe sand it all, you know, to 1500 and then piece by piece go up the grits and stuff like that. Cause that's only in 1500 right now. I'm still going to break it up. I just don't want to be sitting around while I'm waiting for that to uh, harden. All right, let's get to work. All right, guys, actually, just to keep it in like the uniform of going piece by piece, we'll just jump to another area. 
I'm gonna jump on the roof. Now the upside is the roof is a lot less orange peely, so it should be a lot less work, but it has got a ton of trash in it. So it's gonna be hard to throw water up here, so I'm just gonna spray. And I'm gonna try the DA on the polisher again and see if I can really get it down. The upside is, if I do get a little bit of pigtails, well, it's the roof. No one's really gonna be noticing. So I figure this is gonna be the best panel to really try to get good with the DA. guys you saw me knock out the top so the uh, roof is already done and that was actually an accidental time lapse sorry about that guys actually stay away from it now because these cheap shop lights you get that strobing which i imagine is going to pop up in the video so sorry about that and uh, i don't really have the money to upgrade so if you want me to like comment and subscribe guys now uh like i said i kind of went through it i went through all the grits so 15 2000 3000 and then i buffed it out lots of fails and stuff happened but let me show you what happened over here so it actually came out good. Let's spoil alert. But this area, wow, in the camera, that just looks awesome. Now over here, from here over is the DA. And I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but let's see, a little bit of a light maybe. There's a deep scratch right there. There's another deep scratch over here. So the DA definitely causes a lot more gouging. Where over here, it's just a lot, lot better. I'm really happy with the way that came out, guys. Don't mind this, it's a little bit of dust because um, the rotary pads exploded on me. That's why I meant some fails. Check out this, just, just blew apart. And luckily it blew apart as I was lifting up just slightly because it blew off the thing and all the rough padding on the DA, which is down here. <laughs> Would have scuffed the heck out of that. So I know I said I went with the Harbor Freight system, but yeah, it's still Harbor Freight, I guess. So that pad and this pad went out on me. So this one went out first because this is the rougher one. And then I switched over to the blue one, which is a bit coarser, but actually I think I like that better anyways. It took out a lot more scratches. And then to polish, this uh, blew up on me. So I busted out the rotary finally, and I got this going, which I bought it, so I might as well use it. This is amazing. So rotary obviously takes a lot more off, which is why I was staying away from it, but also goes a lot, lot faster. It definitely was a lot faster. That polishing DA was like 10 passes to get it kind of where I wanted it. That was like boom, 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 and it was out. I'll show you guys in a little bit. So that's gonna be the thing now. I'll do the blue on the rotary and then hopefully the yellow to polish it out and hopefully no more breaks on me. But also let me show you over here. So over here, I polished this side down. I didn't end up doing it over here, so we still have to take care of that. But man, that came out really, really good, guys. Now, right in here still needs to be polished out. It's pretty gray. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but that's because I wanted to stay away from the edge. We'll polish the edge later when I do all of this stuff. It's actually the next day. So I only get a couple hours between my 12 hour shifts, guys. So I went in, I did half of that last night, the other half tonight. And that means that our clear is ready to kind of send out. So let's try it out. All right, guys, so here's our dried marks. And hopefully this should work. We'll just wet it down. I got 1500 on here. All right, guys, all cleaned up and sanded. I think it came out pretty good. There is still a little bit. Let me see if I can turn that light off. It might be too bright. There you go. A little bit of a low in there, but it's, you can't feel it at all. So it'll most likely sand out when I go through the grits and I get the rest of the orange peel, as you can see in here off. So I'm going to call that a win, guys, and hopefully that blends really well. 
cool little technique, but I'm happy with it. So it's kind of knocking out all the trouble areas I forgot. Now, that means we can jump back over here on the back, but of course I, I'm jumping all over. I kind of want to move over here and knock out these areas. Because it's the next day, which means uh, my polisher came in, which I think is still in the house. So I gotta go grab it. So that means we can come over here and do this. And the big reason I kind of want to focus on this, guys, is, uh, can you see it? Let me see. It's getting dirty over here. Too much light. Is there's a lot, there it is. There's a lot of trash in here. Like a lot, and I'm kind of worried about it, especially since this cowl is really a focal point on the truck. So I wanna make sure I can get a lot of that out. Okay, let's just jump into it. As you can see, I have taped the body line up. That way I'm not sanding away on this while I'm trying to get away all of this garbage. And man, this, this panel got pretty bad. Now, all I'm gonna do is wet sand with 1500, guys. You have seen me do this a bunch of times now. So let me just go through and start knocking it out. And I'll bring you back just to see how it came out. Well, just real quick, guys, I did a light scuffing. I don't know, is it gonna show up how many? Yeah, there, all oh, the little dirt nibs, just to show how bad it really, really was. All right, it's all sanded up, and it actually came out pretty good. I'm not surprised. I figured it was gonna come out pretty good, except definitely got something buried in the clear there, which kind of sucks. Oh, that's really unfortunate over here a little white spot so it, this one seems more towards the surface although I've already sanded pretty well with the 1500 so I'm going to go through the grits and see if that comes out but that's definitely not you can tell it's pretty buried in there and I've already jumped over here and done this side so that sanded out really well and this one has two little dots buried in it that really sucks guys I was worried about that happening and as you can tell I have two different wet and dry towels here I was really worried about that happening and it did and there's not much I can do about it because you know instead of trying to sand it all out and re-clear it I'm gonna buff it out see how it turns out if it's not too noticeable so <laughs> we'll kind of leave it this is never gonna be a perfect paint job and there's gonna be little issues but as long as it looks good overall I'll be happy so now what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go through the grits guys I'll get it all ready to go I'll bring you back when we buff it all right guys it's all buffed out to 3000 and so here's our little guy hopefully it works really well and it doesn't come with like a green or a coarse one. It comes with the wool, which is really aggressive. So I'm gonna go fast and I already got it kind of primed. So we'll throw a little bit just to make a large mess onto the panel here. Let me spread it out and we'll kind of just go at it. Oh yeah, that's way too much. Now I wanna start on this side because remember we already did this. So I'll just blend this all the way in and just wrap it around. All right, start low. And then kind of go up, make sure the pad is primed. Well, the battery died, but I kept going. So this is it all buffed out just with the wool pad. <laughs> it's awesome, guys. Super stoked. Went ahead and knocked out this side over here. Now, what ended up happening was I actually ditched the wool pad that came with this. This is the brand, guys. Some Chinese brand is what I'm guessing. This is the one that came with it. It just throwing fibers everywhere and it's already wearing out. This is the one that came with this buffer. Now, the reason I'm not using this buffer, guys, is because I will be using it to actually... Um, it's not doing what I want though. It's really slow and it's more, uh, it's like more rotary style. And I wanted something DA because DA is a lot softer and you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So I use the pad from that and the wool from that is a lot higher quality. So at least Harbor Freight for the win, but I do have a plan for this thing and this thing is gonna get used a ton. So don't worry about that. Now what we can do is switch over to the yellow pad with the finishing polish and let's see how it turns out. Buffing my way to a decent paint job, guys. Oh my God. Look at that, that shop light in it. Just beautiful all the way across. I am so stoked about this. All of the trash is out. It looks absolutely awesome. And the little spots that I showed you, yeah, they're, they're there. These two there. And then I already went over here and did this side too. We got our one little spot there and the little white spot I talked to you guys about. But just look at it. It doesn't take away from anything. And if you're not looking for it, you don't see it. And man, I'm blown away on how good that looks, guys. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Now I didn't do this over here because um, that's a three inch pad. It does come with a two inch pad too. So when I come over here to do this body line, which I think I'm gonna use a two inch pad, I'll just come over here and then knock out this little bit that's left. Cause unfortunately we're gonna have to buff this uh, body line too. Cause there's orange peel and then you want it to blend in. And then there's also trash in that. Cause I got trash in everything guys. And that's just the way that it went. But those little spots, I'm truly not worried about it. It sucks right now. But a year from now, when this paint has seen some miles and everything has been done, it's just gonna blend in with a little bit of defects that happen. And I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm so stoked with the way that came out. <laughs> it's awesome. So all right guys, let's move on. Do body line, maybe hit the lure, louvers, but you guys seen the sanding and stuff. So I'm just gonna start knocking some stuff out. All right guys, I went ahead and just started knocking out this body line here and it actually came out really good. So this one's already been buffed out. So you can see it shines really, really nicely. I did find a little bit of a dent in there. So I put some clear to kind of get rid of it, but I think we'll be good otherwise. Man, it came out good. There was a ton of trash though. My goal was not to actually originally to sand everything, but man, there's a lot of dirt. So this is what I did. I had taped off the body line and I was just gonna show you before I take it off. So to get a nice crisp line and I'm not in here sanding our area, we already buffed. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is take it off just to buff it. That way I can kind of blend the line. Now, since I went over there, the pad is already primed, ready to go. And of course I'm putting too much, although I'm getting a lot better at trying to make sure I'm not, you know, putting too much on here cause I'm tired of making a mess. So we'll just kind of spread it out nicely. And as I say that, I'm probably going to make a giant mess. We'll get the cord from rubbing all over this. Maybe toss it over my shoulder. How about that? There we go. And just go at it. There it is, all buffed out and looking pretty darn good, except <laughs> right there. I completely goofed up and destroyed the paint right there. <laughs> Man, guys, learning experience. So that's through the clear, and right there you can tell it's through the blue. Right there, what you're looking at is right at the epoxy sealer that we put on. Man, that blows. How did I do that, you're asking? Well, First to, you know, doing stuff I don't know what I'm doing. I came in to try to blend the line and let me show you, right? Oh, you can't even see. Right there, guys. I was trying to blend this line and that hit right there and just tore right in. That sucks so bad. But am I really that mad? No, cause I had prepared myself that I might be messing things up. At the end of the day, how you fix that is you just sand it up. You fill what you got to right there because now you're gonna have a bunch of coats. So it's definitely a lot lower. You spray some color, spray some clear, and then you cut and buff it in. And also guys, because I accepted that that is happening because the first day that I spray this, right after I did the outro to my last video, I dropped the camera stand on this door. <laughs> and I scuffed it up and put a nice little ding down into the paint. And that one's real deep right there. So I knew I was gonna be doing that anyways. Do I wanna be doing that? Am I mad about it? Yeah, but I kind of expected these things to happen in this weird way because I'm handling something I've never had to before. That's a learning experience. That was my carelessness. I'm probably never gonna do that again because I'm gonna be super hyper aware about it now. But now I'm just gonna go through, buff out the truck. When I start breaking out stuff, which is not gonna be this video to do some patching, it's probably gonna be when the truck's almost assembled because this might happen again. I might bump something, I might scrape something. I, it's during assembly, there's probably gonna be some more mess ups is what I'm saying. It's all a lot of rambling to say you take it in stride. So I'm actually really happy with everything buffed out. I'm totally 100% confident I can get that patched up and fixed. So it is what it is. So we're moving on is all I'm saying. Take it in stride guys. Now this is already done. So everything up here is essentially done and watch it gleam. <laughs> what? Now we just got to do the uh, pillars and then I actually got to do this area just to match up how I've already done this one. And I went ahead and you guys earlier and I sanded up all of this. So this is where we're gonna blend this part into the roof. And that's already sanded out. I'm kind of curious how far I wanna take the orange peel over here, guys. Um, I just don't wanna go so low that I can't buff in there. Cause you know, we just saw what happens when I get too crazy. And then I gotta come through and finish this out. 
But what I wanna do right now is let's go ahead and just kind of close off the whole front of this and let's buff this. Remember we got our little drip right here, which is where? Did I cover it up with the tape? Oh no, it's right there. There's our drip. Now I put tape here because I don't wanna, you know, you know, do what I did over there basically. Start bumping into this and destroying the paint. So I'm gonna come through and lightly sand. There's not a lot of orange peel really. This is actually really nice. It's gonna be just this sanding here, a little bit of buffing. This should be good to go. The downside is, is these came out so good, but I think one of them has a little bit of garbage in it. So I may try to just hand sand one or two louvers just to get them where they need to be. Now I'm not gonna make you watch me sand everything, guys. That's not what this video is for, so let me just knock that out. May bring you back to show you how I do the louvers, but rest. otherwise I'm just gonna start slamming out and knocking out the truck, guys. Well, a uh, giant mess later, cause I can't keep anything clean. Panel's done, <laughs> it looks really good. Sand it out, all done, I'm super happy with it. And the louvers actually look really, really good. And I think the only piece of garbage is, in, is right there. I think I'm gonna leave it for now, guys. Cause you know, I came down here and I found that there's actually a paint chip in the clear still. And by in the clear, I mean it's buried in there. And you know, this cab obviously isn't gonna be perfect. <laughs> It's definitely coming to show. Painting in a garage for the first time definitely has its uh, telltale signs. Plus, I'm a little bit reeling from that paint scratch. Actually, I already think I know I'm gonna fix it pretty soon here. I think we're actually gonna attack it later, but it's gonna be simple and go. Now what we need to do, we got all this stuff, guys. Basically, I've already sanded this out. This is only to 1500. And then I was talking about what to do <clears throat> with the orange peel. I'm just gonna bring it level with this. Level with this, I can get the buffer in, and then with this tape protecting it, I'm not too worried about messing up the drip rail. So it should be good. So that means I just got this piece here, 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 which should be pretty straightforward. And in the back, although the downside is, is where is it? Well, I was going through this, my little red pad, which is what I was using for the two inch that ripped on me too, man. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but these are falling apart on me. Uh, so my tools are falling apart on me guys. But anyways, you guys have seen me sand and buff a bunch now. So let's just go ahead and finally knock out the rest of the cat. saw me buff both sides and the front here, which means the entire front sheet metal is done. Meaning the cowl area, the pillars all up here. Just look how awesome it looks. The, sh the light in the shop just doesn't do the same justice. When we'll get it out in the sun soon. It's kind of dark now, but <sighs> wait till the sun gets on it, guys. Man, it just looks good. All that's left, so even this pillar in here is done. All that's left is just this area up here on the roof because the entire roof is done, you guys already know this little bit here, and then the back panel. Here's over here on this side, just looks awesome, guys. Blends really well into here until you get to this bad boy. And you know what, guys? I know I said I wasn't gonna fix this in this video, but it's been eating away at me. Like, as I'm buffing, I'm like, man, had I not done this, this cat would be done. Well, once I get the back panel done. So I have a plan, guys. I think we're just gonna try to do a quick fix on it and see if we're able to fix it. We'll put the light on so you can see. I got an idea. Now, normally the right way to fix this thing, guys, is you just sand that area down, kind of blend it, feather it, maybe you have to fill it, and kind of spray an area, and then kind of cut and buff that in. But another way to do this is, and it's actually done on other paint vehicles, is you can just go in and like use like a paint pen or something like that and you can just color in this area with some base and clear and uh, hopefully feather it right. Let me actually get a little better with this. And then kind of sand that in, hopefully it blends in. Now the downside to usually doing that guys is, cause I've done that on another vehicle, that's actually like little corrections, is that usually it doesn't match. In the right light, you're able to tell. And it's mainly because after weathering and the color changes, the humidity and yada, 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 Paint changes color, ever so slightly. But my mind's thinking, hey, I have paint from the same gallon this came from. It's only been about a week. And I have from this uh, paint from the, or clear from the same gallon this came from. So maybe I'll be able to get away with just doing that and I won't have to spray it again because everything should match up. 
All right, I've sanded it. And actually I have some good news when it comes to that, but let me go ahead and wax some grease remove real quick because we're going to need a clean area. But let me show you, I'm actually pretty excited about one little bit. All right, that's how it came out. Now, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. There was two little parts. This actually sanded out and there's still base. So I'm not going to put any more color in that. I'll just end up clearing a little bit over it. But we'll come in here and put a little bit of base in here. Okay, I picked up some base and I'm just going to paint it in. Now, this isn't as much as it looks. It's only about three ounces, which is still way more than I need. But it's about the smallest I could actually mix up because I wanted to actually make a two to one mix. So it's exactly the same reduced amount that's on here. So hopefully the color looks the same. So it's in there nice and mixed up. I'll kind of mix it like that. And now I'm just going to kind of paint it in. And I'm going to do everything, guys. It's going to be a couple coats. I'm going to wait flash times, all of that, just to see if I can get it to be exactly the same color. Now I'm on the GoPro, guys, so I don't really have a fancy camera. Zoom isn't my thing, but I'll get you as close as I can. I'm just going to dab it in. Well, might as well just do the little one, too. Now it all blends. All right, let's leave that for a little bit. I'm gonna come do two, two or three coats. I'm not gonna go exactly flush. Technically with a paint pen, that's what you would do, but I'm just gonna get close up and then fill it with a clear like we, we've been doing with the indentations and just see how it comes out. All right guys, there it is. It's actually got three to four coats on it. It's super thin stuff, so I thought I would actually build a little higher than that. But <laughs> at least it finally looks the same color again. Now what I'm gonna do here is essentially waste a lot of tape. And to be clear, it's been about uh, 45 minutes since I actually put the last coat on. So it's had plenty of time to dry and this base coat dries really fast. All right, same thing guys. Way, way too much clear, but I want it to be mixed properly. So it's got the right mixture and I'll just start filling it in. Now the idea here is that the clear is a lot thicker. So what I'm gonna do get out of your guys' way of seeing, is try to build it up. Try to wipe away that drip too. And then if we can build it up in that area with a couple coats, sand it back out, buff it, and hopefully it comes out okay. All right, guys, it's the next day. I really, really wanted to get that clear kind of set up and let it dry. It's nice and hard now. And look at it, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm excited to see if it actually works because that'd be really nice. I really want to get this cab done. Now I need to uh, obviously sand that out. The downside guys is this is already cut and buffed, which means this clear is already thinner than it was when we started. So I really, I think I'm going to go ahead and tape it off again just to knock off the highs and then we'll blend it in later. Ugh. All right, guys, all taped off. I just left the part exposed that is already have extra clear on it. Like I said, I really am worried about burning through the, the rest of the clear now. Now this is 1500, which is pretty light to actually try to sand this down, but I just want to be gentle about it. All right, there it is kind of all sanded out and I'm lost my light. So let's give you a little shop light. I'll put a light on it when it's all done. But if you can already see, there's some discoloration here. So that really sucks. Let me see if I can. Everything else is blending really, really nice, except right there. Now, I don't know if that's just at the top where we can send out, it's still a little high. Now I need to start blending it in. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just gonna 1500, kind of blend it out, 2000, 3000, and we'll just see how it comes out. All right, guys, you can already tell that you can see it. It is what it is, but let's buff it out and see how well it comes out. All right, there it is, guys. It does it look better. Let me give you the light, absolutely. We do have a weird little color dieback that happened. Um, we're not really sure what happened there, but if you catch the right light, you can see the whole repair. All right, I had to grab a light because I wasn't really showing up on camera, but will it show up now? Something like that. I don't know, can you guys see it? I can see it really easily in person. So was that a good repair? No, it came out just about as good as paint, paint pins really do, but it was worth a try. <laughs> I definitely did not want to have to respray it and I'm still gonna have to scuff it up a little bit just to blend some paint in. But we're gonna worry about that later, guys. That's done and honestly, now that that's protected, we can worry about that down the road when we have to do other repairs. And the good thing is I didn't do it on the door, so it's only gonna be one area where we have to worry about like that. 
So yeah, it does suck guys, but like I said, we didn't do it on the doors, we'll fix those later, and I'm not cut and buffing these doors in this video. They're actually gonna get put away, and why I actually cut and buff a, uh, a door that we have to fix anyways. But what I was doing while I was repairing that cow piece over there was this. Check it out guys, the cab is done. Just watch this thing shine. I got the whole back panel done, and this thing was so orange peely, it was a pain in the butt, but look at it shine now. You can see the reflection of all my garbage on the floor. <laughs> but man, it just looks awesome, guys. I'm so stoked about it. And uh, the Harbor Freight system has just been failing me. This is on the floor because look what happened. It just blew apart on me. And I got lucky enough that I've been hyper aware, really been paying attention since I messed up that cowl area. I just saw it getting wobbly. I pulled it and everything blew apart. Where are the pieces? Yeah, all over here with the mess. So that failed. So all three of the pads for that one failed on me. I don't know if it's the Bauer because it's just cheap or it's just that one. So that sucked. But what I ended up doing here, guys, was I actually got the DA to work. Now it worked for the 2000 and the 3000 grit. And as you can see, actually came out pretty good. Now, like I said, I only did it for the 2000 and 3000 because I think what was messing me up was these film discs, guys. This, the 1500 is, yeah. A film disc, I hate these. These just wouldn't sit right, they wouldn't work right. Now the 2000 grit is, here's one, is a kind of a foam disc, it's got a lot better feel for it, and it really, really sanded well. So that really helped save me. The back still took me about two and a half hours though, so it still took a good amount of time. As I always say guys, this took me way longer than I thought, but I think it's just the cab, man. Every time I touch this cab, it just takes me five times longer than I thought. The doors have always been fast. Everything has always been fast. These, this cab has killed me, but check it out. It is fully cut and buffed. I turned my terrible paint job into, you know, one that actually passes as one. It's awesome, guys. Yeah, I do have my little mistake here, but I'll still take this paint job over anything, especially since I get to say that I did it myself. <laughs> I'm so stoked. All the way around, the roof is still dirty, but it's well buffed out. Ah, oh, it just looks so good. Stoked about it, guys. Now this paint job isn't perfect and it was never going to be. I knew I'm painting in a garage and a guy who's never done it before, but it's perfect for me. It's got paint chips, it's got issues, it's got the, the defect I put in it. It's not perfect, but I love it and I am super stoked about it. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me get this far in the project. I know it's taken a while. And I know the progress has seemed slow, but I promise you it's not my lack of hours out here. It's simply just the way that it's kind of rolled out. Part of it is just sanding just takes a mountain of time, guys. It's just the way it goes. But I hope that I'm giving the courage to some of you to come out here and just get it done and not be afraid to make mistakes. Like I always say, guys, if I can do any of this, so can you. Now, on the next video, we are finally just gonna be wrenching. I'm not sanding, I, I need a genuine break, guys. But the cab will be on the chassis. There's a bunch of wrenching. I got a plan to turn this thing into a roller so that we can push it outside because I need it out there, the cab out of, the, out of the garage is what I'm saying, so that I can paint the rest of the sheet metal. Now, like I said, with that, guys, that's a video. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate all of you. And like I just said, if I can do any of this, especially this thing, so can you. I'll catch you guys on the next one.